How's everyone doing? This is Than from Title Gardens here to talk about something that nobody really wants to talk that much about. Namely, it's the pests that are in our reef tanks. So there's really a good chance that there's something in everyone's tank that's causing trouble for our corals. The reason I say this is because pests are really, really good at surviving despite every effort to prevent their introduction. A single egg that makes it past, I don't know, three different chemical dips can create an infestation months later. But don't fret, I've got some tips on how you can manage these problem critters. Sometimes our corals give clear signs that something is wrong, like these zoanthids here. They haven't opened in about five days. Could be nothing, but it's certainly suspicious. Other times though, nothing looks to be the problem, and it's easy to assume that everything is fine, but it's good to be on the safe side. In this video, I'll be focusing a bit on zoanthids because they seem to accumulate the widest variety of nasty pests. So what are these pests, you may wonder? They range from worms to sea slugs, all the way down to certain bacteria. I've even had the displeasure of sea spiders that I won't be showing because I'm arachnophobic. Here are some sea slugs. When they're younger, they're white in color, but as they eat zoas, they gain color and toxicity from the corals. It's a method of defense. These are Asterina stars. Most are harmless, but a few species out there eat stony corals as well as zoanthids. Okay, so how to go about removing these guys? I like to clean coral the entire time in a solution designed to eradicate these nuisance critters. This is Coral RX, and it works for the most part, but it is on the pricey side. A tip if you're just cleaning zoanthids is to use fresh water. Zoanthids are very resilient to fresh water, but just about every pest is not. Backing up for a moment, the reason we do this extensive cleaning besides the obvious that we don't want to sell people infested corals is that our main focus here is aquaculture, and pests can ruin huge populations of our coral by stopping growth. While the corals sit in their anti-critter solution of your choice, the next step is to use a pipette, at least I think that's what these things are called, or some sort of mini turkey baster thingy to blow water at the corals. Believe it or not, pests are not the biggest problem when it comes to stopping coral growth. It's the detritus that settles on the coral. Even if you don't have any pests, the detritus at the base of your corals can cause them to stop growing or even recede. This little bit of maintenance goes a long, long way. You probably never thought to buy a makeup brush, but they work wonders when it comes to cleaning off corals. They're more effective at removing film on corals while being far more gentle than a toothbrush. For the fellas out there, if you get funny looks at the store, just say it's for your girlfriend or you're in an 80s tribute band or something. Okay, next step, the dental tool stuff. This is what I use specifically to remove these little mini mantis shrimp. Maybe you can see them there. They're tough as nails and they make mucus tunnels that bind to detritus. The problem is that they make these tunnels right at the base of corals and more often than not, this causes the corals to recede. Lots of corals, but zoanthids in particular, are susceptible to bacterial infections. Of all the problems I've laid out so far, this is actually the easiest to manage. You just have to dip them in an anti-infective solution. The most common zoanthid infection is called zoopox, which looks like little white dots on a zoanthid colony. If you poke at them, they pop like zits. For other types of infections, I normally reach for an iodine-based solution, which does a pretty good job of neutralizing the infection. In particular, I like using iodine on large polyp stony corals that are looking a little under the weather or have already started receding. I've saved the most important tip for last. Observation is the single best thing you can do for the long-term health of your coral, but unfortunately, it's also the hardest thing to develop. The better you are at spotting issues, the faster you can deal with them. For example, I was having a problem with this soft coral. Can you see the cause? How about now? I actually got lucky and happened to grab this particular coral out. This little crab was practically invisible in the tank. All I could tell was some of these suspicularia were falling apart and dying. He probably single-handedly killed several hundred dollars worth of coral. Now that is the value of observation. Okay, that does it for pest control. 
In the comments below, let me know what's the craziest thing you've had to deal with in your reef tank. Alright, until next time guys, happy reefing.